Good evening. Um, this is John Bushka. Wanted to just let you all know about another development. Um, the bookstore marketing campaign for my second book, um, which is presentations to bookstores around the country, has started. And this is what it looks like. It's actually for the second book, the When Liberty is Stressed book, which um, was published at the end of 2002. Um, I don't know which stores they are. I know, since I live in the D.C. area, um, I know that camera books on DuPont Circle in Washington, D.C. is very popular and it tends to have a lot of paperback nonfiction books that are more obscure. So I would think I would hope that that's one of the ones, but I don't know that for a fact that it will get a pitch. I hope it will. Um, then I want to talk a little bit about um, the plans for a screenplay um, treatment that I'm going to discuss soon in more detail in another video. But I just wanted, and that's largely based on chapters one, two, and four of the first book. And all I wanted to talk about tonight is just the basic topic sentences. And the critical to the, the treatment that I'm going to propose is basically my role in the debate on gays in the military. The, of course, as you know, the don't ask, don't tell policy was finally rescinded in 2011, but it was it was in effect for about 17 years, and it was a contra It was an issue that got a lot of attention um, 20 years ago, and in the 90s, and it, gen it generated a lot of the material in my book, for example, the first book. So if I do chapters one, two, and four, I would have a narrative that focuses mainly on that idea. Um, and so then the, the trick, you know, because it's a basically a personal narrative about me, maybe without a lot of continuous interaction with the same people all the time except my parents um, because the other people change all the time. It's a little harder to fit into a screenplay template like the Harmon Circle and the rectangle of characters and that kind of thing. But I'm going to talk about that in another video. But I want to talk about the two points. If I focus on that issue, the two main points I would be emphasizing is the idea that the forced intimacy that happens in a dormitory in college, as it was in 1961 when I started college, can be compared to the forced intimacy and even the idea of unit cohesion in the military. Um, that's somewhat relevant today in school systems and with sports. And in a way, that issue is sort of showing up kind of in a distantly with you know the um, gender ideology debate and what's being taught in public schools today, which is very controversial. There is some commonality between the two subjects. The other point was that for men particularly, and biological men, um, in when I was growing up, the it was assumed that your ability to participate in the common defense and to be able to participate in protecting women and children was something that could be required of you when we had a, a draft. People still have to rel still have to register for the draft for selected service. There's debate over whether women should be required to register. Trans people have to register according to um, birth gen birth sex. So anyway, that still is, is a topic of interest to me because of the moral implications and the fact that we used to have deferments and that we used to have situations where. Um, people, if they weren't doing well in school to get a deferment, um, their their lives could be at risk or they might be sent into combat. Um, that was a real issue. Then, two the issues that will not be as prim that would not be as prevalent in those chapters, but are sort of behind the scenes and might be told in flashbacks, which I'll get into in another video, would be particularly the idea of the fundamental right to privacy and that that was somewhat eroded by Alito's opinion overturning Roe versus Wade last um, spring. And, but that may have an effect on other laws like sodomy laws and contraception. There was a law passed recently to protect gay marriage somewhat. Um, um, but yeah, you might have to protect these with federal laws or with a 
another or theoretically with another constitutional amendment which is the Bill of Rights 2 idea which is actually talked about in the second book not the first book but that's sort of ancillary because I do talk about it at the end of the first book um, in chapter 6 but it's not in the narrative chapters of the first book and then the idea of the free, of free speech that the freedom of reach that you get on the internet with your speech your moral claim to being able to keep it can depend on how much direct accountability you have for others the whole skin of the game idea that's something that we don't talk about very much and that something that would be subsumed by the first book but if we did a treatment of the second book which would be different I'll talk about that in just a minute um, will that would definitely come up as a very important topic this idea that I call the mousetrap um, it's not really Agatha Christie's play but it, that's what I call it um, there's even there's even a little there's even a little photo of one here but the idea that I call the mousetrap you know I was never interested in letting others into my life unless I could find purity in them or purity in other people around me and that's actually you know find other people to look up to with us kind of upward affiliation or idolization and that can be a dangerous idea if it is gets goes too far and that's something I would talk about more with respect to the second book but it does come up in the first book in an unusual way basically in the plot at several um, points and it does affect the harm and circle so that's the other thing I wanted to say um, so that pretty much does it for this we'll be talking about more um, the second book I would just also add the second book would I would probably be much more open to the idea of, of writing with other people having other people besides myself and in order to bring the whole idea of fundamental rights up to date considering everything that's happened since I wrote the second book um, the whole public health issue with for example and lockdowns and the right to move around um, all kind you know all kinds of other things would come up so that's it for right now